Hello and welcome. Please pause the video and try the problem on your own. Let's start by reading the problem together. It says a function is graphed on a set of axes, right, the x and y axes below. So we have this function here, and often when we're investigating functions, um, the goal might be to talk about the domain, the x-axis, right, the inputs, domain, and the range, or the outputs here. Now the idea um, is that we can actually analyze domain and range uh, even for really complicated looking functions and ones you don't recognize. So be prepared to see functions you don't recognize, but then also realize that you can step back and break these things in pieces. Let's look at what it's saying here. So even though we might not recognize this function, that's okay. If we break it in pieces, we can analyze it kind of nicely. Um, which function is related to the graph? In other words, which one of these describes this graph right here? Now, each of these, I think I'm spelling this right, are called piecewise functions. Piecewise functions. And notice the way we spell piecewise, this word right here, is not the piece as in, uh, you know, make peace, not war, not as in peacetime, um, the opposite of fighting, of course, but peace as in the piece of something, right? a part of something. So these functions are broken up in parts. You can have as many pieces as you want. Notice each of them have one, two parts. This first one, what does it say? It says f of x. Now that's your output of your function, right? That's the range right there. It equals one of two things. It equals x squared. It's saying when x is less than one. So it's saying when the domain is lower than one, um, your, your function is equal to x squared. And it's also saying when the function is greater than 1, the function equals x minus 2. So let's analyze this one. Look at, I'm going to look at the linear part first. That's the part without the x squared. That's the parabolic part. Notice they're all broken up into parabolics or quadratics, x squared. Those are different names for this curvature shape right here. And linear parts here. So here, this line, if we extend it, let's make it green. If I extend this line, I notice something right away. I notice that the y-intercept is here at about one half. Now the slope, I also notice up one over two, right? I notice the slope is one half. The slope is rise over run. So I know that this line isn't extended, but I know it's, it's piecewise, it's really cut right here. But it's important to extend the line to really analyze it. So I'll do that over here. I'll leave it over here. Um, so that line, just going to set it up right here. We said two things about it. We said that m equals 1 over 2, and that b, the y-intercept, is about 1 half, right? So that's the point 0 comma 1 half. If you remember with mx plus b format then, this would mean the equation for the line would be y equals m, slope, mx, plus your intercept b. So y would equal 1 half for your slope times x plus 1 half, right? This would be the equation for that line. Now in the graph, as it shows over here, uh, clearly, you know, it's the, the graph is cut up. The line doesn't really extend. So I can just get rid of this, right? Get rid of pieces here. Okay, so, but to understand the pattern of it, we would have to extend it to kind of define it for all cases, right? So that's the idea. You extend this line and figure out its equation. If you look at all of our choices, we now know the answer has to be choice two. That's the only one with the appropriate linear function. That worked out nicely. But let's just keep going to verify that this piecewise function is correct in both cases. <clears throat> so um, if, if you're still not convinced, right? Look at this. It says x is greater than one. This is true. So, so, so you can make a table. And try x values that are greater than 1. Try simple ones like 2, let's say 4, and 6. What would f of x? f of x is like your y right here. I know we said y. y and f of x are interchangeable because they both represent outputs or range. They both say the thing, same thing. The f of x is nice because it tells you that the range is based upon the input x. y, it's a little ambiguous there. You're not really sure. So if you plug 2 into this function, we get a half times 2, or 2 times a half right, uh, plus one half. So that equals uh, two times a half is one, plus a half is 1.5. Look at our graph. When the domain is two, right here, 
<coughs> excuse me, our output is one and a half here. It's working. <coughs> so that point represents both the domain, two, and the range, the output, 1.5. Let me stop writing in green. I'm not sure if you can see that. Sorry about that. Let me just, uh, oops, let me uh, fix this. Okay. So here, when the input is two, I use blue, one, two, the output is one and a half. So that's the point, two, one and a half. If we plug in four over here, right, four times a half is two, plus a half is two, two and a half. If you plug in six times a half, that's three plus a half, that's three and a half. Notice those points are right here on the graph. So we know this works, right? Four and two and a half. Six and three and a half. These points are on your graph. So we know that we've defined it correctly. And then notice that um, the way the piecewise function is defined, we'll clear this off again, it says that when x is less than one, we use the function x squared. So if I think of this parabola here, it would continue if we, you know, set it up this way. It would go something like that, right? Um, let's see if I did a good job. Nope, let me redo that. I know it's going to cross this point if I extended it because x is being squared. So I know if my input is 2, my output needs to be 4. I need to reach this point 2, comma 4. So let me just draw that. All right, there we go. Um, so here, this parabola um, it appropriately represents this part of the graph. How do we know? Well, again, x squared. So if x is less than 1, let's try a couple of values less than 1. If we try 0 and we square it, the output would be 0, x squared. 0 squared is 0. So that point's there. Here, what at this point? Well, the input's negative 1, but negative 1 squared is positive 1. So that works. If our input's negative 2, and the output is 4, which is this point right here. So this graph does define it. The last thing to notice is that this graph is undefined at one location. And that happens quite often here. Um, now, you can see it on the graph. We see it as this empty hole right here, right? Oops. The open point right here. What that means is there is no definition at the point for the input 0, right? The point 0, 1. Uh, excuse me. What this means is that the point 1, comma 1 is not represented on the graph, not defined. Right, so it's undefined when x is 1. We don't know what the output is then. So if you saw it on a graph, you could also infer that it's undefined at that location. All right, I hope this helped.